in New Orleans. I went to Cafe Du Monde and got beignets three times. Do you remember what happened the last time you got all stressed out and you were eating sugary stuff? I'm way skinnier than last time. I'm way healthier than last time. You're eating beignets. That's three times you know, a day. You've probably heard of the Kardashians who are famous for just being famous. You don't sing. You don't dance. You don't have any any talent. But we're still entertaining people. In a recent post on her mobile app, Kourtney Kardashian talked about how she went on a ketogenic diet for a few months to help with a detox. Apparently, her doctor said she had high levels of mercury and lead in her body, which had damaging effects on her overall health. I don't keep up with the Kardashians or watch their social media posts, but this news caught my attention because I've been doing the keto diet for a long while now. So in this video, I wanted to analyze the Kardashian keto experiment. Do I look fat? Just like 20 pounds overweight. Courtney wrote, keto diets are low in carbohydrates and high in protein and healthy fats. Once I knew the ground rules, I was very strict and really stuck to it. I ate minimal carbs and no grains, beans or legumes. Instead, I focused my meals on fresh vegetables and lean proteins. I would make broccoli rice or cauliflower rice to at least feel like I was eating some carbs. Those poor carbs, they will be missed. Then I would add protein, so I often ate grilled chicken and fish over broccoli rice, cauliflower rice or spaghetti squash. I mixed in roasted vegetables, fresh salads with homemade dressing and smoothies made with avocados and bananas. Her morning routine also consisted of apple cider vinegar and collagen protein powder, which in my opinion are great for the skin and longevity. In addition to that, she did intermittent fasting, quote, For me, this meant not eating for 14 to 16 hours after dinner. I wouldn't eat past 7 p.m. at night and then I would wait to eat breakfast the next day until after my morning workout which would be around 10.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. Then, one day a week, I did a 24-hour fast where I only drank homemade bone broth, water, and green tea. 24-hour fasts are great, but that bone broth probably kicked you out of the fasting state. Courtney did say she felt low energy and headaches during the first two weeks, but she pushed through this phase. Way to go. Looks like you got the keto flu. Take off my boot. Oh my god, my boot, not my foot. But... She would also have a cheat day once a week, where she, let's presume, ate non-keto foods. She missed those carbs. Woo! Man down. Man down. So, let's break it down. Basically, she did a cyclical ketogenic diet with carb updates. The standard ketogenic diet prescribes you to eat low-carb, high-fat and moderate protein, with about 70-80% to 80 of your calories coming from fat and less than 5% from carbs. The cyclical ketogenic diet is less strict as you eat keto during the week, and then have a carb refeed day. During the keto period, you'll establish ketosis for a few weeks before you get kicked out of it again by eating carbs. In reality, on a cyclical ketogenic diet with weekly refeeds, you're only entering into ketosis after the first three to four days. Then you may stay in ketosis for maybe one to two days, but if you consume some carbs, then you're already out of it again. I'm really hungry, so I'm not in the mood. I'm not a doctor or a certified nutritionist, but I've done intermittent fasting for over six years and I've been on keto for nearly three and a half years. I've also written several books about it, so I get the basic principles. Like Courtney said, her goals with the diet was to fix high levels of metal toxicity in her blood. But let's also presume she wanted to stay lean and fit. What is ketosis anyway? I should give you some sort of a brief overview. Ketosis is an altered metabolic state in which your body has shifted from burning glucose to fat. This can happen during prolonged periods of intermittent fasting, starvation, or eating the ketogenic diet. Originally, the ketogenic diet was used to treat epileptic children thanks to its ability to reduce seizures. Now it's been used by people with diabetes and insulin resistance as well. And of course, it's very effective at making you burn your body fat. Although keto is great for reducing inflammation and protecting you against disease, there are no clear evidence that suggests that keto is going to lower the amount of heavy metals in your body. In theory, it can help to promote the cell's own ability to cleanse themselves through the process of autophagy. To trigger autophagy, you need to be fasting for a long time, but eating keto can also allow some periods of autophagy to kick in. The most important thing for fighting metal toxicity is to avoid exposure to heavy metals, like putting nickels into your mouth, touching old house paint, working at a metal factory, touching dirty metals or eating foods that have been contaminated with heavy metals. She did say that she had small amounts of mercury in her blood, which is funny because fish is one of the most mercury contaminated foods on the planet because of ocean pollution. Fish with highest mercury poisoning are tuna, swordfish, 
mackerel, shellfish, sea bass, bluefish and shark. Fish with lower mercury are salmon, pollock, flounder and catfish. But let's also presume that the Kardashians are wealthy enough to afford low mercury foods and she didn't make her condition worse by accidentally eating mercury contaminated fish. The same problem happened with Tony Robbins who a few years talked about how he got mercury poisoning from eating too much tuna and swordfish. I mean, Tony's a big and healthy guy who exercises and eats right, but this hidden killer completely wiped him out of the park. But let's get back to Courtney. I'm not the cooker. I would say that she would have gotten better results by eating strict keto during the detox period and then switching over to a cyclical ketogenic approach. Carb cycling can be good for boosting metabolism and keeping your thyroid active. And of course, I think that she just loves carbs. I'm the maker of the dough and I roll it out. That's all I do. Overall, she had a positive experience but recommends checking in with a doctor before starting keto yourself. At the moment, she doesn't seem to be eating a ketogenic diet as one of her latest blog posts talked about how she eats sweet potatoes, oatmeal and bananas. Most of her food still consists of organic whole foods like vegetables, avocados and salmon. Seems to me that out of the Kardashians, Courtney either has the best personal trainer or is simply putting in more work. She's definitely in good shape and doesn't appear to have any health issues. It just makes me feel so much better, like mentally, physically. But what about the other Kardashians? Khloe Kardashian, who used to struggle with weight, is now in great shape and she's eating similarly as do the other sisters. In 2017, Kim Kardashian's nutritionist revealed the secrets of her diet. Get enough protein, healthy fats and cut the carbs. She said, the body is only built to circulate about 1 to 2 teaspoons of sugar at a time. But if you're constantly drinking sugar and eating carbs that turn to sugar in your body, you're wearing down your sugar metabolism over time. A lot of that excess sugar converts to fat and that's how you gain all your weight. Which either can mean that I'm having a carb intolerance or I have diabetes. To make it more clear, she also said this. Our blood is made of protein and if you were to mix protein with sugar, you'd get caramel. I'm not sure about the scientific validity of those claims, but you get the idea, we get the picture. Too much glucose in the bloodstream will make you diabetic and obese. You're like a closet eater. You need an ankle bracelet. Kylie Jenner, however, seems to be eating whatever she wants, as her social media posts show burgers, waffles, potatoes, tacos, and such. She was also pregnant, so maybe that's why she was so hungry. Two burgers. One for me, one for the baby. One commonality amongst all of their diets is the elimination of dairy and gluten. These foods are very allergenic and they cause inflammation in the gut and the skin. I wish I could give you a more thorough analysis of what they actually eat, but to do that I'd have to pay their monthly subscription fee, which I'm not gonna do. You're lucky that I'm gracing you with my Listen, ideas. I in conclusion, the Kardashians aren't eating keto all the time, but they do pay attention to how many carbs they eat and what other ingredients they put into their body. I personally think that it's a good idea to keep your body in this semi-ketotic state at least the majority of time. It's gonna keep your blood sugar low, it's gonna prevent your blood from turning into caramel, and it's gonna help you burn a fat. Gosh, I hope you don't have diabetes. Like I said, I'm not a medical doctor or a consultant, but I do have a lot of videos about the ketogenic diet, intermittent fasting, and many other ways of optimizing your body and mind and then it's why. thick as f but other than that thanks for watching make sure you click the like subscribe notification bell as well my name is seem stay ketotic stay empowered caramel